KFI AM 640, Thompson and Espinosa Show. Elizabeth Espinosa, Mark Thompson. You know, I just wanted to do a quick shout out with you, uh, Mark, to Mike Nolan, KFI in the sky, retiring. Today was his last day, 41 years in radio. Amazing. This man has spent the last 34 years working in a, a split shift, I guess, doing both morning and afternoon drives here in L.A. Ever since I've listened to KFI, it's Mike Nolan, uh, you know, KFI in the sky. In the sky. Yeah. I mean, hey, Mike Nolan, KFI in the sky is like synonymous with KFI. Yeah. It's weird that he's living after 41 years. Yeah. He's been here at KFI and Coast for 28 years, and I love his quote. He said, well, now I just want to sleep in. <laughs> Congratulations, <laughs> Mike. You're awesome. We're really going to miss you. An amazing voice here at uh, KFI. Indeed, indeed. Well, we talked about the brouhaha about, uh, with, with the Sony hack on the movie The Interview. It won't be released. It won't be released online digitally anywhere. Oh. But there's one guy we know who's seen it. <laughs> and it's our movie critic, host of Culture Blast on YouTube and the Great American Broadcast, Michael Snyder. Welcome to Thompson and Espinosa. Hi, Michael. Hey, Elizabeth, how are you? Good. I'm so glad you're with us today. So wait a second. You saw the interview. Was it everything we, well, we're not going to see it. <laughs> what, what is it? Yeah. What, uh, how what, was it? Give us a sense of the film. Uh, the movie is a sort of um, kind of blunt satire of TV uh, entertainment reporting and uh, TV news, particularly cable news, and the political intrigue, and in fact, uh, heavy-handed and uh, not all that funny. Other than I, uh, you know, I love the idea of James Franco playing a Billy Bush type character who secretly wants to be, uh, you know, Bill O'Reilly, and that kind of struck me as funny. But when they uh, get the assignment from the CIA to turn their interview with Kim Jong Un into an assassination attempt, things kind of get weird and, and not that hilarious and filled with kind of various ethnic um, lowbrow humor, uh, obviously sexual hysteria. And, you know, honestly, I, I haven't liked much that Seth Rogen has done other than Knocked Up, This Is the End, and this most recent film, Neighbors. And uh, in each case, it wasn't Rogen that I truly liked. I mean, This Is the End, the chance to see him die in an apocalypse. How would you not want to stand up and cheer for that? <laughs> oh, Michael, you're, not a, you're clearly not a fan. But it's funny, uh, Elizabeth and I were talking before this whole thing started, the controversy about the interview, that it seemed like it was going to be one of those fair to Midland kind of uh, comedy things would do okay business. And then with all the controversy, it seemed as though it was taking center stage and a lot of people would go. But you're saying it really was just a fair to Midland comedy. It absolutely was, and one that cost them 40-plus million to make. So this is a, a massive fail on the part of the studio, of the filmmakers. They may have been better served uh, doing what Charlie Chaplin did when he made The Great Dictator and doing the kind of fictionalized, fictionalized version of their totalitarian chump. Uh, patriots and people on, uh, you know, the more extreme uh, sides of the political spectrum might be pleased to know that this movie does uh, show the Kim Jong-un character to be a two-faced, uh, double-dealing, oppressive weasel. And, and, you know, woo, stand up and cheer, America, hell yeah. But uh, by the same token, I really think that this was no more or less pointed or volatile than the stuff by South Park uh, creators, um, Matt Trey and, uh, you know, Matt yeah. Trey. And, you know, to me, the, the real problem here is if you start kind of pulling movies like this out of theaters, you make a very uneasy climate for satirists. Yeah, by all means. I mean, do you agree with President Obama, who basically called out Sony today, saying you guys made a mistake, you should not have pulled it, even though we know that so many movie theaters have came, you know, pressured them, said that we're not going to play it, but digitally speaking, release it that way. Well, I do believe that the president uh, speaks for me in this regard. I think it was an act of cowardice in yeah. a country dedicated to freedoms, including freedom of speech and freedom of expression, as long as we don't transgress other people's rights. You know, we're allowed to say what we believe. And, you know, in a case like this where it's uh, weak sauce, comedy-wise, these guys still have the right to get out there and do their movie. Uh, did they make a mistake in uh, making the central uh, villain a real-life figure uh, involved in an assassination attempt? Probably. But uh, should this movie have been pulled after being made? Uh, I don't think so. No, so but, I, but they should be able to make fun of the, a dictator, 
even if he's alive. I think that's art. Well, they should be able to make fun, but the point is that it's it had the blowback, and now and well, uh, no one's saying they shouldn't be able to do it. But now, what do you do if you had had the right. studio? As I've said, I mean, I just don't. I don't know how many options you have, and you know, you face the an unprecedented breach. Of yeah. your of your uh, your computers there at Sony to the point that it, it really may threaten the future of the studio. Yeah, Michael, uh, one to ten, how great is the interview in your mind? Uh, it's about a four, maybe a three, three, mm-hmm. four, something like that. Mark, yeah. you were right. Uh, hey, uh, what can we see now that the interview's off the table? Hey, you Selma, want to hear some um, best picture touts. Some uh, some hey, get out there and see these movies. Yeah, what exactly? The, give me the get out oh. there and see these movies. Okay, are you ready? Prepare yourself. Okay. Boyhood, which will not be everyone's taste, is a fantastic and spectacular look at the mundane and the ordinary in the life of a young kid in Texas growing up from about the age of six to about the age of 18. Is that the um, one where they take the same kid and they, and they re- boyhood it's called, right? Where they take the- Yeah, boyhood. It, it's all the same actors. It's the work of Richard Linklater who did Dazed and Confused and Suburbia and also made the before movies, before sunset, before sunrise, and before midnight with Ethan Hawke and Julie Delpy. One and that's a likely about. Oscar winner is what you're saying. Well, this is a fantastic film, and, and Linklater uh, sticks with the same cast for 12, 13 years, and boy, does it reap dividends. Patricia Arquette, in particular, as the boy's mother, uh, should be on a lot of short lists for a Best Supporting Actress. Fantastic movie. A long film, but to me, it just trundled on by. I, I didn't feel like I was wasting a second watching these ordinary mundane things as a family comes together, falls apart, and deals with all the stress that anyone would deal with in the current uh, economic and social climate. Mike, what, what about Oprah in Selma? Well, Oprah to me, um, you know, is the most minor aspect of Selma. What Selma is about, and it is a wonderful, wonderful film, a docudrama about the Reverend Martin Luther King and the civil rights movement at its uh, greatest juncture and uh, and the most volatile moments in in it uh, as, um, you know, the 60s start to boil over with uh, social unrest. Uh, David Oyelo as um, Martin yeah. Luther King gives a performance for the ages. It is wonderful, vivid, fantastic. And as George Wallace, uh, England's Tim Roth, wonderful, fantastic. As LBJ, another British actor, Tom Wilkinson. Yes, three British actors taking jobs from hardworking American actors, <laughs> but justifying it with fantastic performances. Unlike some movies where you look at the actors and you go, that person doesn't really remind me of the historical figure we know so well. These guys nail it. And again, David Oyelowo, oh, what a, what a performance. Oprah, also, to I was, was going to say, Ava DuVernay is the director, and I guess she's making um, you know some some history here with. Uh getting a Golden Globe nomination. In 30 seconds or less, give me one more that's just kind of a popcorn movie. Oh, a popcorn movie. American Sniper? Wow. No? Uh, you know, I do I do love... Uh, American Sniper is a rock and good film from Clint Eastwood about a Navy SEAL uh, assassin in the Middle East and his life. It's based on a, a true story and uh, one of the best performances of Bradley Cooper's career. And if you really want popcorn, available, I think, on video now, Bradley Cooper as the voice of Rocket Raccoon, the most fun movie of the year, Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, and uh, one more quick note. If you get a chance to see The Imitation Game, starring Benedict Cumberbatch as historical figure Alan Turing, who helped... Uh, break the code uh, during World War II and help the Allies win the war and then fell into a horrible, uh, tragic circumstance in England. Go and see the imitation game. It will break your heart and open your eyes. Michael Snyder, host of Culture Blast on YouTube and the Great American Broadcast. Thanks, Michael Snyder, for being with us. Yeah, You're thank welcome. You. Yeah, he, said, didn't, he didn't like the interview, did he? It, it, well, it's going to be tough. It's going to be for either for me, Selma, Unbroken, or American Sniper. When we come back, here's what people actually spend on their significant other's holiday gifts. And oh, no. No, I don't want to yeah. no, and we're gonna you guys ask, are going to get it. We're going to ask our Thompson Espinosa audience what uh, what is spent, too. So oh, we'll no. be taking your calls as well. All right. Thompson we'll Espinosa Show, KFI AM 640. Start saving some cash.